Hey, what's up everyone? It's Ridge. Okay, so welcome to part three of Render Like Writes In. Bernie writes in, the master of inking. This is very weird. The lighting is so funky in my office right now. I don't know if you can see this, but okay, like that's what you see right now. Like, dude, the sunlight is blaring in my office. Look at this. So I'm I'm looking through my camera viewfinder right now and it looks dark. Hopefully the video isn't dark, but look, I've I've only got so much time in the day. I can't like, you know, I can't go nuts trying to set this up. Oh, let me show you. I'm going to use different ink today. So today we're using Eon Vortex F5, the big one. So this is the big bottle. This is 16 fluid ounces. He does sell a smaller um, bottle of this ink. And um, I think if you just Google like Eon paper, E-O-N, um, you'll be able to, to find his website. So anyway, I don't normally use this ink because uh, it's kind of specifically made for a paper. Wow, it's really thick. Um, well, this will be interesting. Maybe I need thicker ink. We will see. As you guys know, the struggle with tools and stuff has been interesting. So what I thought we would do today is we're going to work on this. And, and I want to say up front, I want to thank all my Patreon subscribers because I would not have done this video today if it wasn't for them. I'm super busy, I'm deadline and hard, and uh, yeah, I wanted to do this special for Patreon, so although it's going up on YouTube, they're the ones you need to thank for me doing a video today, because I'm deadlining, line in the dead. All right, so I'm using the Hunt 102 today. The snib was great yesterday, hopefully it'll be great today. Um, one thing that we may be fighting on this paper a little bit is I printed this blue line quite dark, which I normally wouldn't do. So what ultimately ends up happening when you do that is um, it affects the integrity of the paper a bit more. But I got a nice thin line there. And I'm going to ink this a little slower today. I, I want to explain something. Okay, so as I'm doing these demos, I rush a little bit. And, and here's the reason why. Is a piece like this, for me to even do part of it, would take, you know... 16 to 18 hours. I'm not going to do a 16 to 18 hour demo on YouTube. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with, with everyone. Um, if I'm going to spend that much time on something, I mean, it, it, it's like I need to really have a reason. <laughs> so um, what I do is I try to give you the gist of what's going on. So sometimes I'll, I'll bang through lines and not match them up perfectly to this stuff. Um, but you know, it's it's just to save time. You get the idea. You know, if you really want it perfect, then you're just going to need to go in and go very, very slow and do it, which is totally doable. You know, I've always had a belief since I was a kid that I can draw anything. It just depends on how much time I want to spend on it. And it, it's really kind of benefit benefited me throughout my life. And I don't want that to sound like an egotistical thing, but I really don't believe that anything is harder to draw than anything else. Some stuff takes more planning, some stuff takes more thought, and some stuff takes more time. But ultimately, the hardest things to put into art, I believe, is life. That's the trick. That's the hardest thing to get into a drawing. Drawing Batman is not hard. Drawing Gotham City with a thousand buildings isn't hard. It's just how much do you want to commit time-wise to working it out and then drawing it. You know, it's a level of patience. So the same goes with anything. And I have to rotate the page. I apologize for that. But just understand I'm trying to get the best uh, angles for the lines. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, drawing should be fun. And, and you know, it's, it's a very personal thing. It can be when you're working professional there's definitely different um, things that you take into consideration you know it's, it's I'll fill that in later um, okay so I'm gonna do his eye but yeah I'm working a little different than I have on um, this piece before and this is smooth bristol um, I'm just basically using the back of a DC board um, and, uh, this is really fun. I really enjoy inking this, honestly. It's, it's quite fun, um, to do. So, he's got a few little, like, 
The one thing you kind of want to be careful with this style, and I've mentioned it in the other videos, is um, traditionally in comics, uh, we outline things. Like, you'll outline the silhouette of a body, and um, this writes in Frankenstein style, this little tiny eye. I don't know how small it looks on the camera, but this thing is pretty teeny weeny. Um, most of his lines, or most of the silhouettes that you're seeing, like even the eye socket and stuff like that, everything is really kind of like lines that blend and create the, the edges. So, um, I, like I mentioned here, this suggestion of his shoulder blade is done by line work that ends right here based on here. There's a cross hatching that's very, very tight that almost creates a full black um, that sort of sits in there. So um, you, your, your edges are actually created more by line than by um, uh, literally doing um, uh, an outline, if that makes sense. ink might be a tiny bit thick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the tip of my nib um, damp here in a second. I'm just gonna dip it in water and then kind of dry it off, but keep a little tiny bit of the moisture on it. See if that helps, because the ink is sticking to it just the tiniest bit. That bottle of Eon ink is, is a little older, so um, it's working great though. Everything seems to be going good today. I'm on fire right now. I'm working on a pretty detailed um, detailed project and so it's it's got me in the zone <laughs> so oh my god the sun is so bright i, I know you can't tell cuz i'm i'm just above it uh or it's just below the frame of this uh where the camera's filming but oh my god it's so bright I said I lose my patience a little bit doing this stuff where it's like, oh, he's got two lines to go like this, o only for the filming of the video because I feel like like um, I'm lagging when I sit and just kind of try to like mimic it exactly. But if I if I really wanted to do like a reproduction of this, then I would I would uh, be more mindful of every little nuance. But I'm just trying to get like the overall feel of the lines down. Just, just so that you can see, like how how you would approach it. Um, if that makes sense. But even in here, I wouldn't fill this in with solid black. We'll we'll do it with lines. What happens is with the with the the blue printout too is um, it can create edges and sort of like the illusion of things looking a certain way when they're when they're not exactly that way. Haven't really had a time to study this stuff um, in between working and, and doing um, what I'm actually working on, so. But yeah, if you if you want to take the time to like say if you did a pencil drawing and you want to really really capture this look, try not to fill in too many of your blacks with jet black. You want more um, like lines that create the black and little sort of gaps of breathing room in in them, and that will help uh, get the effect more. And remember what I mentioned too is it it all compounds on itself um, as you get more and more done, and then it starts to look more um, like it all kind of gels. So these are very very thin lines right there. Um, and he's got three little lines right here. I got to get closer to the. That's kind of one of the things too is when I do these demos, I'm sitting pretty far back from the piece further than I would normally. Um, so it makes it tricky to do what I would normally do. I 
and again the temptation is to you can see I even put a little X there it's like that that's a habit from comics not from working on this style but um, really what you do is you just kind of blend this stuff in I have a little straight line right there let me try to smooth that out but yeah I wouldn't normally sit this far far away from the piece when I'm doing it Well, hopefully everyone's having a good day. This is fun to be back working on this. Today I have a very, well, I wouldn't call it a very detailed page. I already started working on it yesterday, but it's um like a bike shop. And, oh my gosh, I got to ink bicycles and spokes, tires and handlebars. And, I mean, they didn't shortchange the bike. So it's like, it'll be, it's an interesting day of inking. I don't think I've ever inked this many bikes on a... <laughs> <laughs> a comic book page. I'm trying to think if I've ever inked a bike before. I would have had to, right? Maybe a Madame Xanadu. If that's interesting, I'm trying to think if I've ever inked a bike before. I had to have. Remember that 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 issue of Wildcats where Grifter rode the bike? No. I apologize too if my hand is all chewed up. I, my skin is really, really dry right now. The weather has been going back and forth and my hands are like totally cracking. I have to keep them pretty dry when I work. You know, like I can't put lotion on my hands and so they get like pretty like, get beat up. Yeah, this is really, really fun. I, I uh, What's great about doing uh, something like this is it will remind you really fast, and it's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, is the amount of um, patience that you need to do something like this. And it, it's like, um, it sort of shows you that it's doable if you're willing to commit the time, you know. But again, it boils down to that theory I had as a kid which was how much time do I want to spend on this? Do I want to get it perfect? Am I going to tap out 80% of the way through and then hack out the end? Will I never finish it because it was so time consuming to do? All that stuff is going to play into your um, follow through. That's just the bottom line is I've worked with artists that are really, really good that um, have great follow through and then some that that they they kind of peter out you know like you, you could see it's like they sometimes can't commit to the whole piece to the level of intensity that they started it with and that's tough especially if you're doing um, you know 20 pages of interiors it's it's you know it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you wanna be able to start and finish as strong, you know, like that should be balanced. And that's just for each page, but then also for the book. They both need to be consistent. So it's always a good idea to think about your style that you're gonna use for a particular project. Like obviously Wrightson did this for a specific thing. You know, cuz you couldn't you couldn't do a monthly book and do this. The everything's working pretty good today. I you know, I'm going to credit the Eon Ink and say the Eon Ink is good. I definitely this nib is good too, but I used this all day yesterday. I've, ex I've talked about before that, um, you know, a Crowquill nib, this is a Hunt 102, will last me quite a long time. I'm going to get a little fresh ink, and uh, I may even wipe this off. It's kind of getting a lot in the back where it's going to, it'll get a bit of a clunky line. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going to wipe it off real quick. Um, so I just take a towel, like a towel that I ripped up and turned into little swatches that are a little smaller, and uh, then I'm, I'm putting the nib in it and just kind of going like this. Okay. 
And you can dip it in water sometimes. You just don't want a ton of water on the nib when you go back to ink. Oh, so there's a little piece of hair on there. Um, but uh, yeah, it can kind of refresh your, your nib a little bit. But I'm, I'm literally just skating on the top of the paper right here. I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, there's a little bit of a taper that's like, this gets thicker right here. He's got the suggestion of the, um, like the larynx. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to make this line a tiny bit heavier. And then he's got even a little suggestion of a heavier line right here. And then these lines are all equal thickness and go like here. And the other thing I would mention in this video is because I haven't been doing a ton of videos for YouTube, I've definitely, um, it's a little harder to narrate already. God dang, what is going on? Little pieces of hair or something. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Like I, I tried to do a Journey of a Thousand Miles video yesterday. It was hard. And it's, it's not even like, you know, I've been away from YouTube for... For weeks or something like that. The seven days a week definitely sharpened my, my YouTube narration skills. And they're already declining. Man, it's so hot I can actually see heat waves on my page. And it's like freaking 8.30 in the morning. It was supposed to be cloudy all day. That's what they told me on the news last night. Man, I could I could do this all day. It's so fun. <laughs> like, I was I, oh, I don't know. I don't want to like. I was a little bummed that they didn't ask me to do the the rights in book. They did like a tribute book for him, and it's like I don't know anyone. And it's not even based on these videos, but it's like if my black drawings didn't put that on people's radar, that I would be maybe a decent person to, to participate in that book. I don't really know what could could. There's no. I mean, the only other person I can think of in comics that really does that is Andy Brass. Like, like, you know. And it's. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. But yeah, I was. It's like, eh, I guess they don't care. And I, I don't know who they are. I don't know who put the book together. And, and you know what? It might have been one of those things where maybe you're supposed to volunteer. I don't even know. But it's all good. There was something else that was going on recently, and I was like, oh, I would have been perfect for that, but I didn't get the call on that either. <laughs> and there's, th this is fabric here. It's a little hard to tell in the blue, but there's a seam that runs right here. You can see those little thicker whites. I'm not going to move my camera because I don't want it to, um, um, but anyway, so this is, this is his skin that I'm rendering right now. And then what I'll do later is there's, he's, he's covered in this like medical gown. And I, I, the way it looks to me is that it pulls up over the shoulder, kind of like a Tarzan thing, but this is actually a seam. And then the fabric is here. So that's actually a thicker chunk of fabric with bigger, um, sort of, uh, clumps of fabric. And, uh, I'll, so it's not actually black in there. I am very, very happy that I got to meet Bernie Wrightson a couple of times. I think I met him twice, just briefly, like, you know, and I was actually able to give him um, a set of the black drawing prints. So that was really neat. That was neat for me because, um, you know, he's kind of like one of the godfathers of this whole thing. And then Frazetta is another one that I... I I regret that I didn't meet him. I actually went to Comic Con one year, and he was there signing. And um, I didn't, I didn't, I knew who he was, but I wasn't like, um, I hadn't like gotten into the books and all that yet. I think they were just starting to release that stuff. Uh, I mean, the the reprints of the books like Legacy, Icon, <clears throat> and Testament. And so um, there was a pretty big line for him. But I I walked by and I saw him sitting there, and it's like man. I would love to say, like, man, Frazetta is so awesome. Most people that that have followed me uh, a little bit online know that I've watched Painting with Fire about, I don't even know now, 400 times, something like that. I, I can, like, put it on and just 
have it as background noise all day, pretty much every day. <laughs> It was interesting as I sat next to the guy that made the movie. That's how I ended up getting... But it's kind of how I got into Frazetta, as weird as that sounds. But so one year at Comic-Con, um, they had that DVD coming out for Painting with Fire. And I was sitting next to the guy that made the movie in Artist Alley. And just over the weekend, I kept watching people like come up. And they were like freaking out over the movie and like so excited and... Um, again, I was aware of Frazetta stuff, but I hadn't really like become like a full blown Frazetta maniac. And um, I, just over the weekend talking to him and stuff like that, I, I was like, "All right, I definitely got to get this movie because if it's having this kind of an impact on people, this is a very important thing." And I and I, and I did like Frazetta stuff. I remember when I was a kid, a friend of mine had a, um, a puzzle of Frazetta that I always thought was really cool. It's the one with the um, those guys in the snow with the axes. I still have it. He actually he gave it to me when we were kids, and so I still I have it in the garage. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I was aware of his stuff at a young age, and and I also was a big fan of like fantasy books and stuff like that. So you'd see book covers, um, you know, occasionally of of his stuff. It was way after the fact, but you know, still. This is turning out pretty cool. It, it, it's again, the more you put down, the more it starts to um, really all sort of like live in its same. Or what? We're twenty-two minutes. I'll go for like five more minutes, or I'll go. I'll go like a half hour. My phone's blinking. Or no, I guess it's not. It's gonna end at thirty-three. But but again, it's just a level of patience. And and I would say right now I'm inking it maybe like sixty. 65%, something like that. I mean, again, I'm not, like, going as slow as I could, and I'm not completely worried about, like, mimicking every little thing that's down. But we want to cover the real estate is basically what I'm doing with this, you know? I don't really have time to second guess, like, what's going on in little spots. We're just trying to get about the same amount of value, meaning, um, like, like, a level of detail there that creates sort of the same hum. Even this, if you look at these lines, they're pretty um, like up close, like what he did. It's definitely got like a, there's a variation to line. I'm doing really, really thin stuff right here. Um, I'll do a close-up at the end. I just don't want the camera to go out of focus. It tends to want to focus on my hand and not the actual inking. So it's it's impossible for me to gauge that looking through the viewfinder. He's indicating like like um, planes of the face here with slightly curved lines. Yeah, you can really tell that he's drawing this stuff with the ink and not so much uh, thinking like an inker where uh, like each technique is, is um, a perfected thing. It's perfect in its own way, but it's a very organic look that he's got. And then for people to follow my channel, I think what I'm going to do is I, I'll be back Sunday, but I'm probably not going to do any more videos until then just because I need to I need to finish this book that I'm working on. And I've got, I think, 13 more pages. So I have quite a bit of work. And they're, they're time-consuming pages. So follow me on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description box below. And then also today I'll put... Um, I'll take a photo of this and pop it up on my Patreon for people to check out a little bit of a detailed um, look at this, like a still. So um, I'll have a link to Patreon too. And again, thank you to all my Patreon supporters for keeping me on point here because uh, I'm telling you, this video is 100% for, for you and because of you. So I love you. I got love for my Patreon peeps.
bit of a suggestion of an eye on this side. It's interesting. It's really, really small and in the blue you can barely see it, but I'm going to put it in. I don't even know if it's really there. I mean, I mean, it is really there, but I'm saying I don't know if like it's, it, yeah. I do that a lot. Like if I see something in the work, I'll kind of, I'll sort of force my will to get it in. And, and it's, I guess, kind of a, draw, a drawing thing more than an inking thing. Um, and, and it's like, I remember having a conversation with Aaron Weisenfeld a long time ago, and he was talking about what he liked about Al Vey inking him at the time was that Al could see his underdrawing and kind of peg back in things that he was sort of on the fence with in his pencils. And he, he Al would like kind of bring it back out where Aaron maybe was hesitant to commit to it. And I kind of do that when I ink sometimes too. It depends on the work, but I definitely understand what he's talking about. My eye is showing up just a little too much. The paper is super, super mushy right here. So have to be incredibly careful or it's just gonna collapse in on itself. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this little shadow here, and then um, these are like um, what do you call it? Like sections of line, like little little um, here like like rows of lines that created a value. Man, that's looking pretty cool. I'm telling you, I would do stuff like this for comics, but but nobody seems to want to support it. <laughs> only, only, like, it's like I can't get a company to get behind me on it. It's very weird. But, you know, there is Kickstarter. Kickstart my heart, yo. Blow it up on Kickstarter. Make a quarter of a million dollars on a book. I'll be like um the chick from the Dresden Dolls. I don't know, chick is probably not a <laughs> PC thing to say anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. It's Neil Gaiman's wife. She's awesome. I was a fan of the Dresden Dolls years before, uh, she, uh, you know, like, transcended into kind of everything that she is now. Oh, this, it's been quite quiet. She had a, it's an interesting story. So she went to the record label and wanted money for a new album. And the Dresden Dolls were kind of like the White Stripes. Um, and, uh, the label was like, look, you're only going to make, you, you'll only sell like 15,000 copies of your album. We can't afford to drop, you know, 65 grand to make this thing. We won't make it back on sales. And, uh, the quick version of the story, hold on, I'm, this is a complicated technique. Let me, I'll, I'll, let me ink this first and then I'll tell the story. It's a little hard to see what's going on with the blue, so I'm going to kind of... But anyway, but yeah, so her label sort of thumbs down giving her money because they thought that her record, that only 15,000 people would buy her record. So she went and did a Kickstarter, and the record label was right. Only 15,000 people would, would buy the new album, but what they didn't realize is that those same 15,000 people would pony up over a million dollars to support her Kickstarter. So it was a very interesting thing. You don't need... You know, like a high-selling comic book would 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 have to sell at least say like fifty or sixty thousand copies. Um, you know, and like 
uh, you know, lower selling books might only do 8,500 or something like that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that those 8,500 people that would buy the book wouldn't support you more, you know, if you were to offer other items and things with your, uh, you know, like how the Kickstarter campaigns have the tiers and all that. It's interesting, interesting thing, but yeah, it was a cool story. It was the TED TED Talks that she did. I wish I could, uh, her name is Amanda something. I think it's Amanda. Where are we at? With time, thirty minutes. Yeah, that's not bad. So you guys got a thirty minute demo out of me. Rich has got love for his YouTube fam. That's the thing. Patreon keeps me on point. YouTube is my passion. Well, art is my passion. And you get incredibly engaging conversation from me. <laughs> I just feel like I should apologize because I know when I do a video like this, people are like, dude, shut up. But, you know, I said I have to kind of have a sense of humor with all this. If I really, really wanted to, um, let's see. I can't really see the direction that Wrightson probably shaded this in based on the blue line, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with form where I think things probably would go. I don't think it would be noticeable. The thing that's the thing is, I think when the whole piece is done. Oh yeah. So his actually goes to black. I can just take this to black. There was a little anomaly in the photocopy that made it look a little. Okay. So I'm done for today. Um, again, go to my Patreon. The link will be in the description box below, and you can check out. Um, I'll do a nice photo of this that's lit better. Um, and you know, look. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I wasn't annoying, rambling. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you kind of compare this, uh, this isn't a great reproduction of the piece though, honestly, I think it's a little, little muddy, um, cause the, the scans in the book are tighter. The cover definitely printed a little dark. Um, and it could be the glossy thick paper on it, but, uh, you know, I'm telling you when this thing is done, it's going to look really kick ass. I assure you, it'll all blend in because all the fine detail that goes everywhere else, if you feel like this is too heavy handed or something like that, it will all it will all balance itself out. And that's kind of the magic of it. You have to believe that. And again, I'm based on experience. I know that that's the case from doing my own uh, black drawing pieces that, that there's times... In